Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Um, first of all, a little bit about me. Um, I'm Dennis Essler. I am part of the, uh, I like to call it the COVID class of 2020 of Master Gardeners, uh, or the class that never ended. Uh, we have been, uh, we, we got through it all and uh, we made it, guys. So uh, good. That's good. Glad to be here. I, along with my wife, uh, are the uh, co-operators uh, of the Reconnecting Our Roots Garden in uh, Marietta, downtown Marietta. Actually, she's the, uh, she's the boss. I do the grunt work. I do the grass cutting and the maintenance and, and uh, just about anything else she asked me to do. Um, if you haven't seen our garden, we were on the, uh, the garden tour this last spring, but if you haven't seen our garden, uh, we are a 58 bed community garden. Uh, we rent out to people in the, in the neighborhood in downtown Marietta. We're located at the corner of Lemon and Hunt on uh, some ground that's been graciously uh, uh, donated for our use by the Zion Baptist Church on, Le on uh, Lemon Street. Um, so we are a true community garden. Uh, the, the renters plant pretty much what they wanna, wanna uh, grow, a lot of vegetables, but we have a lot of flowers. We have a lot of common areas. We have a nice gazebo where people come and look. So if you haven't had a chance to see us, stop by. Uh, we're there every Wednesday morning working. So bring your gloves and uh, we'll got some weeds to pull or something. We'll find something for you to do, okay? But we're gonna talk a little bit about <clears throat> insect pests, especially vegetable insect pests, because at the garden, we have a lot of vegetables. So we have a lot of pests and we're taking a, um, uh, an organic approach tonight. Um, we're not really talking about insecticides and things like that. So it's more of a what you can do organically uh, to take care of the pests without harming the good guys, okay? So what we wanna do, we wanna learn how to identify damage. We'll talk about that a little bit. How to identify the pests, and I've got a lot of pictures to show you, uh, and then control methods. And let me give a plug here. Whenever you use any kind of control method, if it's an insecticidal or a chemical, please uh, always read and follow the manufacturer's use and handling instructions. We can't, uh, can't emphasize that enough, okay? So well, some people say, well, let's just put preventive insect treatments on everything. Well, you know what? That's not recommended for a lot of vegetables. Um, early detection is the key. Uh, so what does that mean? Frequent and careful inspection of your crops. It's essential. So how do you do that? Buy a jeweler's loop. You can get these as for as few as $5 on Amazon, or if you want to buy a fancy one, it's $50. But five bucks on Amazon, this is a little 10X jeweler's loop. Um, get them and use it to inspect the crops. And I'll tell you, once we get into this and I start describing how small some of these guys are, you'll see why you need one of these. Put this in your garden bag, put it in your, or your apron or whatever you use and use it often to take a look. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Okay, some preventive methods you can use. The biggest one is to plant early. Plant those, those plants early, get them to seed, get them to mature a little bit before you put them out where uh, pests can get them. A plant with a strong epidermis is gonna be more resistant. And something we've all heard is that a strong, healthy plant itself is less resistant to pests. A weak plant will invite pests. They'll, they'll thrive on that. Uh, one method that people use is garden nets, uh, using a fine mesh with some wooden or PVC frames. That's okay but you gotta be very careful with that. If you use a mesh, you're gonna to have to be taking it off because you don't wanna uh, keep the pollinators out. So that's are okay, but not the best. The best practice is integrated pest management. What is, uh, what is integrated pest management, you ask? It's easy, simply means don't attract pests. Do what you can to keep conditions good so they're not attracted. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Keep them out, keep them out of your garden. And if you find them, use a safe, effective method to get rid of them. And we'll, for, again, focus on natural and organic methods. 
So inspect your garden frequently. I think I said that already. Use a magnifier, get your loop, look at your plants. Uh, you're gonna go out there every couple of days and, and water them probably, unless you had five inches of rain like we did in Smyrna last night. But get out there, water your plants, look at your plants, turn over the leaves, look at them, inspect them with your magnifiers. You're looking for something that doesn't belong. You're looking for the bugs. And you're looking for damage. Um, insects damage a couple different ways. Chewing, very, very obvious. You see pieces of leaves are missing. So they have like a chewing mouth part. They, they're actually eating leaves. It's caterpillars doing this on the left, but also that sucking, piercing sucking uh, action. They will in, put a stick in, stick their mouths into the leaf uh, and then suck some of the, the green chlorophyll out and that'll kill the leaf. It causes it to wither, you'll see yellow spots. So those come the feeding damages you can look for. Um, and that will give you a hint to what's doing the damage. Also look for frass and eggs. Frass is nothing more than insect waste, okay? I guess I could say bug poop, if you wanna do it that way. But look for that, look for eggs. Again, this is where your magnifier is gonna come in handy because um, these eggs can be small. Did I mention you need a magnifier? Amazon, five bucks. Now, I have a good news and bad news story about beneficial predators. Ladybugs, great, they love aphids. So, oh, happy day, I have ladybugs. Well, the bad news is that you got aphids, okay? So you gotta take the good with the bad. If you've got beneficial predators, you've got bugs. So you gotta do what you can do to get rid of the bugs. One of the best ways to do it is to prune those heavily infested leaves and bag them up. Don't put them in your compost piece, in your compost pile, bag them up and get rid of them. Ants can also be a good indicator. Ants can also, uh, can actually corral uh, things like uh, aphids and uh, because they like the, uh, the honeydew that they, they produce. So ants, another good indicator that you may have an issue. So now we're gonna talk about just some general pests that infect your garden. Later, we'll talk about some specific vegetables. Corn worms, corn earworms, also known as tomato fruit worms, very, very uh, common. They're about an inch, inch and three quarter long. long. Pretty little things, they're light pink, brown. Um, they're sometimes nearly black. It's not a bad looking little bug, but they feed on a wide range of vegetables. They can eat be pe beans, corn, um, sweet corn, okra, tomatoes, cabbage, eggplant. So they're really a pest uh, that you need to deal with. They'll chew holes in the tomatoes as shown on the right, uh, eat the blossoms, eat the fruit, uh, and you, but they can be controlled organically. Uh, there's a organic product, product called Entrust, that's E-N-T-R-U-S-T, Entrust. That's a good organic control method that's been proven very effective and useful with corn worms. Aphids, we all know about aphids. These are also known as plant, light, plant lice yellow, pale green, and they're tiny, only about an eighth of an inch. Did I, know, did I mention you need a magnifier to see them? It'll help, okay? Um, they, come, uh, they come in the spring uh, in colonies or clusters on uh, growing plants and under the leaves. Remember to look under your leaves, but they can be found in the entire growing season. Uh, they suck out plant juices. Remember that, that piercing mouth, por mouth part, and it makes the leaves wither and, and look yellowish, okay? Um, they also are thought to be vector, uh, they vector viruses, vector means carry. So they carry plant viruses from disease, from a diseased plant to a healthy plant. Another reason to get rid of them. Our old friend neem oil works very well. Insecticidal soap works very well on this or horticultural oils, all effective. Uh, and again, I mentioned ladybugs before. Ladybugs just love aphids. Went to a garden once that was infested with worms uh, and we took our caterpillars and I had a box of aphids. I sprinkled them on and those, those uh, ladybugs just went to town with it on the aphids. It was amazing. And it's double trouble. Again, they excrete honeydew from their, from the abdomen, abdomen, excuse me. 
and that is a primary source of sooty mold. So you've got one pest causing a condition. So you wanna get rid of aphids if you can. Spider mites, also very, very tiny. Uh, they're barely visible. Uh, another reason to use your, your magnifier, but you can see their webs. So look for those webs on the leaves or, the, or the, uh, uh, on your infective plants. The damage, again, this is a sucking insect. So your leaves are gonna yellow and wither, okay? They come blotchy, white, pale yellow, um, and they, uh, the leaves will not be able to produce to uh, the food that your plant needs to live. So what do you do? You gotta prune the leaves, um, any infested parts of the plants, prune them off, cut them down, remove the web webbing, and discard them in the trash. Again, not in your compost pile. Don't be hesitant to pull the entire plant if you want. Uh, neem oil, insecticidal soaps, and some horticultural oils also can help, but many, many, many times you just have to pull and cut. Stink bugs, my personal favorite. They look like little shields, um, and they're called stink bugs because when you squish them, they stink. They also can be um, in your house, especially in the winter time, you can find them in your house. The nymph stage, they look these little white uh, eggs. And then again, very problematic, always on the undersides of your leaves, you'll find the eggs. So look for them there. Um, so to get rid of them, wipe them off, dispose them, prune them out if you have to. Now, how do you wipe off a bug? Easy, duct tape. Wrap some tape or duct tape or painter's tape around your hand, uh, sticky side out, and just pat and get rid of those things. Works real well. There's a couple other critters we'll use the same methodology for to get rid of them. But look at the damage that they cause. They actually get inside the pea pods and put holes in them, making the, the crop inedible. They're very mobile too. Uh, they can easily go from plant to plant and they can happen any time in the season. Um, so look for them, get rid of them. Flea beetles, another really hard one to control. Very small, 16th of an inch to an eighth of an inch. Uh, and they're called flea beetles because like a flea, they will hop. So a very, very hard to control. Um, you need to, uh, most, uh, best way to get rid of them is not get them in the first place. They're attracted to weeds. So keep the areas in and around your garden weed free. Integrated crop, manage, crop management, we talked about doing things to prevent um, uh, pests from coming in. So you wanna do that. You wanna keep your area clean, neat, weed free. Um, and then at the end of your season, end of your growing season, move as much as your, of your crop debris as possible. That'll go a long way in preventing flea beetles the next season, okay? So let's go to some more specific crops now uh, that you all probably have or have had in your garden. So bees and peas are first. The cowpea curiculio, black hump, hump, hump-backed. It's actually a little weevil looks is what it is. Uh, it is got a very distinct rostrum or nose that you can see. There's the damage on that it causes on uh, some beans. It looks like uh, little wart-like stings on the bees, on the on the on the peas. Again, the inside fruit is is just got the black spots. It's in in it's no good anymore. Uh, effective method to control those guys are insecticidal soaps. The Mexican bean beetle, which is kind of a cute name, kind of looks like a ladybug, doesn't it? But it, it's actually a little uh, more coppery color. It's not the red like a ladybug. They're small, only a quarter inch. The larvae is kind of weird looking too, kind of spiky, okay? Uh, it's got 16 black spots. So if you want, use your magnifier and count them, okay? Uh, clusters of yellow eggs are laid on the underside of the leaves. Note a pattern here. A lot of these critters will lay their eggs underneath the leaves. So you gotta be turning leaves over and looking top, bottom, all around. Here you go. Um, they appear, uh, the, make the, they'll make the leaves appear lacy. 
because they're eating the leaves. Check for those masses of yellow eggs. And if you see them, squish them, okay? Neem oil will also deter the feeding of them and oil and insecticidal soap will help again, help the larva, okay? Help to smother the larva. And you can make your own insecticidal soap, by the way. It's actually pretty simple. A little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid or any kind you got in some water and some insects, and I'll talk about this one in a second, you need a little cayenne pepper, that helps too. Thrips, extremely small, one one twenty-fifth of an inch. So you can barely see them, yellow or brown with wings. The nymphs, the immature ones, are very similar to the adults, but they don't have the wings. They often, often feed on weeds found near the garden. So control them first with proper weed control in your garden. Again, if they don't have weeds to grow up on, they're not gonna to go to your plants. See the damage on the leaves, the white splotches, because they're sucking the nutrients out of the leaf. Cucumber, same way, it's got that yellow, uh, not good and green, it's kind of yellow because those thrips have gotten there. Uh, insecticidal soap does a pretty good job. Uh, I will mention on any of these things, neem oil, insecticidal soap, uh, you have to be persistent and you may have to have multiple applications. Cucumbers, melons, and squash, another common uh, uh, crops we plant down here. The stripe, spotted or striped cucumber beetles. I guess they're cousins because some are spotted, some are stripes. Not a bad looking little bug. Uh, they have 12 black spots on the rings on the spotted ones or three black stripes, okay? Neem oil, insecticidal soap, or natural enemies like ladybugs are very effective on these guys. Pickle worms, I like saying pickle worms. And I think it's called this because the larva looks like a pickle to me, okay? Yellowish white caterpillars with dark spots. Um, they will burrow into the buds and blooms and vines and the fruit, okay? Neem oil, again, has been a very effective control substance for pickle worms. Squash bugs really nasty. If you grow squash, I think you're going to get squash bugs. They, to me, they look like they're related to stink bugs. Very similar in, sh similar in shape. Looks like a little more oval than the shield shape that the uh, stink bug was. Very disagreeable odor when you squish them. Look for the eggs and you see those reddish brownish egg sacs, uh, under, egg clusters under the leaves, okay? So look for that. Uh, they the young ones resemble the big ones, okay? So the newly hatched have reddish, um, reddish heads and green legs. That's the damage they do. They like squash, they like pumpkins, okay? They suck the sap out of the leaves, leaving yellow spots. So hand pick them, remember the, the trick with the tape wrapped around your hands, uh, and then insecticidal soap is really effective on the eggs and larva. Uh, again, you got to be persistent and you got to keep checking. Most of these insects, if you can catch them at the egg or lar larva stage, it's a lot more effective. The squash vine borer, a lot like the squash bug, but a little worse because he's getting in the vine. He will up to it. It's like a caterpillar up to an inch long, kind of hard, harder to find, but he will actually cut your vines down. Okay. Um, Look at the base of your plants for evidence that this guy is around. Uh, and the, he will do that. He may do some tunneling and go to some of the surrounding fruit. There's an organic bacterial spray <clears throat> called, and I'll say this a couple times, the brand is Safer, S-A-F-E-R, brand 5163 Caterpillar Killer. That's Safer brand 5163 Caterpillar killer. I like saying caterpillar killer. It's a natural organic fix to these guys. Again, you want to detect them early. If you if you aren't don't find them early, they're going to cut your plant down. Cabbage, collards, broccoli, and turnips, more common crops that we plant. Cabbage maggots, they sound terrible. Okay. Um, they'll eat you, they'll also eat cauliflower, cauliflower broccoli, brussels, beets, radishes, turnips, and celery, yellowish and whitish eggs, as you can see, legless larva, the adults, 
flies lay eggs in the soil around the base of the plants. Um, the maggots burrow down to their adjacent roots. They feed on the roots, killing the plant, and the plants will turn yellow and die. Uh, neem oil and insecticidal soaps, again, very effective, especially on the, uh, the larvae and the, the larvae. The cabbage looper, pale green, smooth skin worms, they're about an inch and a quarter long. Um, they will go along the body of the plant. And you can see what they'll do. They'll just devastate the cabbage leaves. And you'll actually get into the cabbage head. You won't find that out until you cook the cabbage and cut it open. Surprise, you got, a, you got bugs in there, okay? Conventional insecticides often fail. There's a bacillus, and I got to read this one, Thurin GNSEA. It goes by a couple brand names, DPEL, that's D-I-P-E-L, or Thuricide, T-H-U-R-C-I-D-E. Those are um, uh, natural um, remedies for this. Um, they can really work to keep the population under control. Sweet corn, another crop that uh, we all plant during the summer. The European corn borer. It's been a problem here in the US for over a hundred years. Uh, it's a major pest and it will actually attack over 200 different plant species. They're kind of flesh covered larva with dark brown spots. Um, and then it actually will live in the, the stalks of the downed corn during the during the off season, during the winter. Uh, you can see the entry hole it makes here uh, and what it does to the stalk. Uh, again, it can do tunneling. Uh, it can eat the tassels off the corn and then it'll move into the, the leaves uh, itself. What One of the most effective ways to do it, to get rid of them is to remove those old plants after harvest. Once again, integrated pest management. Go to removing the trash out of your garden, removing the, the spent plants, that will help reduce the borers. Uh, and that safer, safer brand 5163 Caterpillar that we talked about earlier, this is also a good organic fix for these guys. Onions, we all have onions. The onion maggot is very, very damaging. It loves the bulbs of the onions. Uh, they're little white maggots, very small, about a third of an inch, and they'll bore underground to eat the bulbs. Um, so one thing they do, they come from decaying organic matter. So if you had, if you're planting in an area that had sod, um, you want to not plant in that area for a couple of years to help get rid of those things. And then if you do find these, be sure that you uh, pull out any of the cold onions out of your, your garden after you've harvested. Again, integrated plant management. Remove the stuff that will uh, attract these guys. Give them a home. If you remove it, they don't have a home. Potatoes and sweet potatoes. The Colorado potato beetle, especially damaging, damaging to Irish potatoes. Um, one thing you can do for these guys, very distinctive looking little beetle, you can hand pick them off. Again, remember the tape trick, works really well for this. So you don't have to touch them, but it, they, once you stick to that, you can't, they can't get, it, get away from you. A soap and water solution will also help control them. Again, a couple tablespoons of your favorite dishwashing liquid to like a gallon of soap, mix it up, spray these guys liberally. The potato leaf hopper, okay? Uh, another little critter that loves to eat the leaves off the potato. You can see the, uh, uh, the damage it'll do on the right. It'll suck them out. They're wedge-shaped, only about an eighth of an inch long. They're very, very active little critters. Uh, it's very slender and they jump, kind of like a grasshopper would jump, okay? And they're very prolific. The female only lives about a month, producing one to six eggs each day. But then the, age hacks, eggs, uh, the eggs hatch in 10 days and in two weeks, guess what? They're making more eggs. So they can really start uh, producing rapidly. Um, they suck that leaf from the underside and they cause them to turn brown. 
uh, and they can ruin your entire plant. Guess what works against these? Neem oil, very easy to use. If you see the big, the big guys, brush them off your plant, catch them with, uh, with the tape, get rid of them. Grubs, extremely hard to control. Um, the white grub lives in the soil. You, they will eat on the roots. Grubs actually love uh, grasses uh, right now. So you wanna avoid planting in any space that's had grass within the past two to three years. Look for them, dig in the, dig in the ground, take a spade full of dirt, see if you find, um, see if you find grubs. If you don't, uh, if you do, you wanna treat it. There's a nematode product and it's called Nemagard. N-E-M-A-G-A-R-D, Nemagard. That has been proven very effective for white grubs. Wire worms, very similar. Um, they affect, uh, they love potatoes. Uh, they, again, you want to avoid planting in areas that had wire worms. You can see the adult on the left and the, and the worms on the right. Um, wire worms, uh, hard to control but neem oil insecticide, insecticidal soap will also help. Our favorites, tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers. Who doesn't have tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers in their garden, right? Cutworms, these guys are like little lumberjacks. They will just cut your plants down to the, to the bottom, okay? They'll cut it at ground level. And sometimes on bigger plants, they'll cut the, uh, uh, they'll cut the leaves off, okay? You're gonna love this solution, coffee grounds and eggshells. They hate them. Sprinkle coffee grounds. I'm told if you go to Starbucks, you can get bags of, of used coffee. A lot of coffee shops will do that. Save your coffee grounds. Eggshells, same way. Put these on the ground. They don't like the smell. They will, the scent and the texture will repel these guys. Hornworms, it's a pretty green caterpillar, isn't it? And it's big, three, four inches long. They like the leaves and they eat a large amount of foliage because they're big. Um, hand picking is easily accomplished because they're big. And again, tape on your hands if you don't want to touch the worms, that's great, okay? Um, homemade pepper spray, very effective. Two tablespoons of your favorite uh, dishwashing liquid into a gallon of water mix it up real well and add cayenne pepper. These guys hate it, okay? That'll help repel them. That's what you wanna do. Sp spray your plants very liberally with that and do it often. White flies are very, very small. Again, you need your magnifier to see these guys and they make a snow, they look like they're covered with a snow white waxy powder. Um, these are almost impossible to control. So you wanna prevent these. So before you buy a plant, look to see if it's got white flies. Very simply, if it's got white flies, don't buy it. Look at the damage they, they cause. They are sucking insects, causing your leaves to turn yellow. They do enough damage on a leaf, it's gonna kill your plant. Okay, let's talk about some general control methods. <clears throat> First of all, there's environmental and cultural practices you can do. Did I mention that healthy plants were more resistant to pests? Again, good, healthy plants, get them started in your greenhouse, in your house, whatever. Get them started well, get them started as early as you can. You wanna put a healthy, strong plant outside into the dirt. Check for signs of insect damage whenever you can. Remember your little your magnifier. You're gonna get tired of me saying magnifier. Okay, uh, plant as early as possible, but being mindful of the frost. Mulch your garden areas, keep the weeds down, water appropriately, rotate your crops. Uh, in our garden, we had problems with uh, tomato blight last year. So we, didn't, we did not plant tomatoes this year. Next year, we'll probably go back to tomatoes or wait another year. So you do have to rotate your garden a little bit. Plant flowers to encourage pollinators. Uh, the pollinators are great because the bees, some of the, the pollinators will come eat some of these insects. Bird feeders are also good. Birds love bugs, right? So plant bird feeders, put bird feeders out in your garden. They will help come get the insects. It's also mechanical control. We talked about pruning, 
removing a plant if you need to, uh, control the weeds in and around your garden and rotate the crops. And then lastly, chemical control. If you have to apply a spray, um, but before you do, identify your plant or your pest, make sure you know what it, what it is. Uh, you contact the extension office. If you send them a picture and I'll give you that link in a little bit, send them a picture. They can help uh, you uh, identify the plant, uh, the, uh, the insect, the pest. <clears throat> and uh, there's, there's resources I'll give you in a second to help identify the most effective chemical to use. Uh, I don't like using chemicals, but sometimes it's a last resort you got to. Be sure to wear safety equipment. This gentleman's got gloves on, he's got a respirator on, he's got long sleeves on, perfect. You need to do that. Uh, it looks like he's even got eye goggles or some type of eye protective eyewear on. Wear the protective safety equipment and read and follow all the manufacturer's label instructions. Here's the resources. And the first one that you can see is the uh, Extension Office uh, Integrated Pest Management Publication. And that is this book right here. You can view it online or you can order a copy of this. I don't know how much, it's a few dollars, but it's got a lot of good information on what to use for what pests. Uh, it's well worth your investment if you have a garden. And then these are some of the websites I used uh, to um, look at, uh, get some answers. You'll notice that all the websites I use are all educational websites, UGA, Purdue, University of Florida, University of New Hampshire, Tennessee. Um, I'd rather use those sites because they're research-based answers rather than rely on what Google tells me, okay? Uh, they may be right, may be wrong, but I've got confidence if it's an EDU website, typically it's right, it's good information. And don't forget, we are here to help. The Master Gardener Help Desk here in the Extension Office in Marietta uh, is open eight to five, Monday through Friday. Call us with questions. We're happy to answer them and try to answer them. We don't know the answers, we'll get the answers for you. Visit us, bring us a plant if you want. Um, bag it up, of course, please. But bring us uh, a plant, let us take a look at it. We'll figure it out for you. And there's that uh, link to email a picture to us, UGE1067 at UGA.edu. That's UGE1067 at UGA.edu. Um, we also here can do soil samples. Again, a good, healthy soil is the key to a healthy plant, and a healthy plant is a key to controlling your pests.